<laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Student Council Press. Oh, great. Oh, yes. I'm gonna bust up. I have actually genuine questions about that. Okay, thanks for hanging out. You're in between scenes right now, aren't you? Yeah. In the final. I just came in for one scene today. It's my second last scene ever. And <laughs> how do you feel? Um, second I feel, last scene. So. Yeah. Well, I feel like ready. Like I feel like it's I've prepared myself. Yeah. So it's not. Yeah. And it's much. not like you were on the show for like a second. No, exactly. That's what I mean. Like I've been on since I was 16. I'm gonna be 22 this year. So I've spent like the later part of my teens on the show so that's insane yeah so wait you came in 11 season 11 and a half i came in as a grade eight technically because i because i did like a little orientation scene with, oh um, yes luke and, and alicia and that's when like alicia's care um what was her character name oh, bianca the bianca was mm -hmm. all like i'm gonna beat the crap out of you and shove you in a locker or something yeah. if you don't shut up yeah I yeah i love her. alicia I yeah love yeah alicia. she's so lovely yeah I just love a hard bitch. That's why I love yeah. Bianca. Yeah. Tristan. It's just so much happened. Like he started this little band, Geek. Well, how would you define Tristan's character? Like when you started playing him, like did you really know what he was gonna be? Mm, not really. I mean, like, I knew all I knew was that I wanted to be on Degrassi from like <laughs> age like 12, 13, maybe. Like I saw it on TV one day, a rerun, and I was like, oh my gosh, this show's so cool. And like I really wanted to be on it and like knew it filmed in Toronto and that was like the goal for like Toronto actors. Like so how old were you when you auditioned? Like did you just audition once? Because I find that like all the cast members audition like 17 times. No, I auditioned for one other character before um, and it was probably like, I feel like eight months before like yeah. I auditioned for Tristan. And actually at that time in my life I was like co-oping at a vet's office for my school and um, right before I auditioned for, or I auditioned for Degrassi, I didn't get it. And I was like, oh, like, cause I really wanted it. But then Stefan told me later that they had saw me and they knew I wasn't right for the part, but that they wanted, they could see me playing something else on the show. And he said that they kind of thought of Tristan after like seeing the audition, which was really cool. It's funny, I have kind of a similar story. I auditioned for Craig. Really? Is <laughs> Krista, that was rude. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, that Sorry. stupid look. I mean. So I wasn't the heartthrob that they had in mind. Yeah. But you know what? I bounced back. Um, no, but I was just like this little, young, effeminate, terrified kid. Yeah. When I came in audition, like I think when I was 14 and then back at 15. And they said that like, they knew, Linda Schuyler knew that she wanted to have a gay character. And yeah. I think they just kind of kept my photo posted on the wall being like this, once we get there, this yeah. could be the kid. I would get, I would tell Marco to, you know, give the endorsement to Tristan as like oh, really? either gay for sure because I think Tristan's character. We grew up with him for so many years, and I think other than Marco, Tristan was the longest queer character yeah. run on this show. Yeah, and he just came in like out and loud and yeah, and that's yeah. what I love about what a different journey. Like Marco yeah. had to figure it all out. Yeah, how'd you feel about that? Is it like a generational thing? My favorite part, and I've said this to people before, is that Tristan came on and there was no issue or yeah. um, explanation because it's true. We had Marco, who that's a very real thing, yeah. right? And that and was like 2002. Totally. Yeah. So it's totally like um, relevant to the time and stuff. And I think when Tristan came on, it was just cool that there was no explanation. It's like, mm -hmm. here he is. and. Yeah. This but, is who he is. Yeah, and just like it was never really talked about. And yeah. that was my favorite part. Is true. I really like that. It's very like normalizing. Yeah, that's what captivated me. And then it's like it got to focus on, I find, a lot of cool storylines that I wanted to do, like later on yeah. too, that like, you know, just with the teacher. Student and teachers, you know how jealous I was of that storyline. Yeah. I am jealous because Marco was all like, I'm in love with one person. Boring. No, that storyline was like, it was really cool because the thing is, though, I had to wait for it. I'd been on the show like the longest of the new Niners, but haven't didn't have an A, a plot, plot, and I really wanted an A plot. Like I didn't know what it would be. I just wanted an A plot so bad, and so the wait was worth it. It was like the read through before that. I've got to say this just because they did it to me. They had me on my knees braying like a donkey for like this. Hamlet. Sorry. No, the block. <laughs> what part? <laughs> the block before, like the um, episodes before um, the teacher story. Yeah, line. what what were they? I had some C plot where I was like in, I think it was play Hamlet or Macbeth. I, I think Hamlet.
not maybe, I don't know. There's some part where I'm like wearing a donkey mask and I'm like playing in a play and I have this like fat suit on and I'm wearing a donkey Do mask. I place? literally get on my hands and knees and bray <laughs> like a donkey. After I finished like, in that read, I finished in that read through. Stefan came up to me, he's like, so what'd you think of that? He thought it was the next read through. He wasn't in that one. He's like, so what'd you think of like that read through? It's pretty big stuff, eh? I was like, you thought he was you? just being an ass. Like I was like, no, I would, no, I looked at him. I was like, what are you talking about? And then he was like, oh, no, I'm thinking of the next one. Yeah, the next one's good. I'm like, sure, Stefan, sure. So you thought and he was then, just being like facetious, like, don't patronize me. Well, yeah, no, I thought like he had in his head that this was some like funny, great storyline. And I was like, no, I thought this was my A plot. But next, but then the next read through, I waited it, it out. And it was like Tristan was there on the yeah. first page. And then yeah, it was, like, I was this like, one's like finally. <laughs> and then it was better than I expected. Yeah. I would have never guessed it was like a teacher. I think it was a great storyline. Yeah. And I think my favorite scene that has ever come from Tristan has to be his blowout with Maya. Yeah. Oh, I <laughs> loved it. Oh, <laughs> God, did I love it. Just fueled your fire. Oh, I was just like, yeah. Because well, <sighs> I want to say I agree with Tristan. I just think that Maya needed to be... I agree that he laced into yeah. Maya. You know, is an inappropriate relationship with a teacher acceptable? No, and it should have ended. But I do get where Tristan was coming from, where he's just like, you know, you're just like this perfect girl. Yeah. You know, and I feel like Tristan had, like, someone threw him a cookie, like a crumb. Yeah. But at the same time, like, yes, it was inappropriate and maybe that shouldn't happen. But, like, I felt... At the time, I think that in like my own head was like, oh, this is just going to be so fun and yeah. cool and like and all, like um, so I wasn't thinking in my head ever. I wasn't like, this is like inappropriate. Appropriate. Like I don't know about this. Like should yeah. Tristan? I was like, oh no, this is fun and cool. Like I totally get why he's doing it. Yeah. yeah. So like that added to kind of the innocence of totally because Tristan, Tristan was too. thinking the same. And then Maya was all like, I know better than everybody. Yeah. So they should have kept your stupid mouth shut. Well, and then it's like Maya like. You're a wreck too. Yeah. Like, come on. So true. I wish that was like the director's cut. It's Maya. You're a wreck too. Maya, you're a wreck. <laughs> but yeah. I really, my why I wanted to be on Degrassi was because I liked the drama aspect mm -hmm. of it. I really liked how it was like everyone was kind of a wreck yeah. and everyone <laughs> was doing crazy. Like no one was just like normal, like yeah. nothing happened. Like yeah. everyone eventually, yeah. something happens to them and they're like, that's what I liked about it. Things happen on this show that has happened one place like every issue has happened somewhere across the globe, but the fact that all of these it issues all happens found them in at one, this room. one school, <laughs> like so that's nuts. why it's so crazy. I know it's so true. Yeah. It's so nuts. Um, another thing I was very jealous about Tristan is his romance with Miles. I think it's just a <laughs> true delight. Yeah. I mean, I keep ripping on Marco, and Marco had a nice little romance, but it was. I don't know, like the relationship between Tristan and Miles was so exciting. Yeah, it you was. Know? It was yeah. just so like from like that like them in the middle of that hurricane being like having the little teen movie kiss yeah. and then like dating this guy who now is sexually open yeah. and like that student council, like the eroticism that happens between the student council competition is like so rock and roll. Yeah. I don't know, I just like, tell me about Trials or Mistin? Mistin. Mistin. That sounds... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trials, that sounds like a small town in Chris Ontario. Chris like <laughs> shaking her head no right now. Um, yeah, I thought that it was very um, natural and again, something that was kind of like, it was very normalized. Like mm -hmm. Miles wasn't like, Tristan, I think I'm having feelings for you. Like it was just all like, from Paris was the first time they had, yeah. like he just came on the show and like Tristan kisses him and he just kind of like doesn't yeah. really do anything. So like I, like, I don't think either of us knew unless they had told him something that they were actually gonna make it like a full blown like later on like mm -hmm. relationship and stuff so we were really surprised when that thunderstruck episode i think it was called because yeah. we were in the thunderstorm um like if this was a rom-com we would kiss right now it's so cute oh. <laughs> i just that listen line. another thing about degrassi <laughs> you gotta love the cheese the thing, <laughs> there's oh every once in a while there's a nice slice of cheese my and i thing, enjoy it my thing is out in that scene in the thunderstorm scene it's like they have these wind machines and this rain machine and it's like so loud and wild and just like 
we would not be having this convo out in this awful storm sure. by the pool. I, it's cute yeah. for TV, I get it. Yeah. Like, you know, it's romantic, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I, if I was out there, I'd be like, okay, can we like go inside and like have, talk about this inside, please, yeah. by the fireplace or something. But like, it could have been like the last thing like Tristan says to Miles as a tree goes down and just well, crushes him. And Tristan says something like, leave me to the storm. <laughs> I'm standing out there so and I'm standing good. out there like this and Stefan's like oh no just stand there like you don't care with your arms I'm like I'm freezing though like I would be like oh my gosh why am I standing out by this pool when it's lightning and but you did it for love yeah it was you fun though it was a fun love. experience to do it was Miles by the whole time you think like what came first the chicken or the egg is it like Miles was just kind of discovering his what his sexuality was or is it because he just fell in love with Tristan and then Tristan helped him get there. My whole opinion on that just in general is that I think that there is like, I, like you know, there's so many different categories. It's not even a category. Like I think there's just such a wide spectrum of things that you could be attracted to or yeah. into and like not into. Just my opinion, I think he just kind of was living life and just discovering things, maybe knew certain things in the back of his head. Maybe he, it took a certain type of person for him to meet to feel that way, I don't really know. And do you think that's part of like Tristan's attraction to him? Um, is it like a conquest? Because you know, like I mean, the straight the straight guy's pretty, pretty desirable. I think, yeah, I think that they kind of like uh, what one was lacking, another made up for. Kind of, I don't know. And I also think Tristan has this. Uh, fun side to him like Miles is wild and like mm. you know has his like pill thing and like he's <laughs> reckless and he doesn't care and like he fights with his family and stuff and I think Tristan it's but then Tristan thing. also has this like teacher thing and like you can tell Tristan has this yeah. side to him that he is kind of free and wild yeah. and down for fun yeah. I don't know I just it's true I think it makes sense for yeah. Tristan totally for yeah he's like a little naive but then at the same time he is a little rambunctious like I feel like he's yeah. looking for a little trouble he is yeah yeah, yeah. totally like, I think if Tristan was, like, I think Tristan's zodiac sign would be, like, Leo. Why what's Leo? Like, it's, like, a fire sign. Like, I think it'd be kind of, like, attention. Like, I don't know. Like, I think his moon would be, like, Cancer. Like, he'd be, like, really emotional. But he has this, like, front up that he's, like, not. Do you follow himself. a lot of, like, signs? Astrology? Yeah, I love astrology. I almost said astronomy. So, fun. so do, you? You, do you, yeah, okay, so read me then, because I don't know what any Wait, of this stuff okay, is. Okay, well, I'm not, like, Cleo here, but, like... Read me. <laughs> okay, so, like, what's just, like, the general sign of, like, or the general characteristics of my sign? Okay, so you're Gemini, so you're ruled by Mercury, which is a planet of communication. That's nice. Yes, you're an air sign like me. I'm an air sign I too. I enjoy I'm a Libra. communicating. So, like, yeah, exactly. It's uh, where we live in our heads. We're air. We're communicating. We're masters of relationships. I get. Oh, cool. yeah. I don't know if that's true for me. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're. It's just <laughs> Libra is a master. There are a lot of, of rela- guys who disagree. No, listen. Libra is a master of relationships because we're the center of the zodiac. We're the scale. Okay. We balance everything. We're ruled by Venus, who's love, beauty, and like. Goddess of charm, love. exactly. So we talk a little bit. You know what? I want to ask one more gay-related question. I'm a little bit on the fence of how Tristan treats Zoe's coming out because yeah. Tristan's like really pushing her out. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that? Um, I mean, yeah, I don't like completely agree with it. I thought it was kind of rude, like some of the lines he said. Like, yeah, I thought it was kind of like I don't think anyone should have to do that. If it's up to that person to say what they want to yeah. say and be who they want to be. Yeah, I feel the same. It's just like when you push somebody out of the closet and they're not ready, it's, it's not beneficial to anybody. Well, yeah. Not to them and not to like the movements because they can't like, really speak for themselves. I get maybe out of an, if you think about high school, like we're older, if you think mm-hmm. about like a high school mindset of like his friend, he's like, but I know you are. So like, yeah, yeah. you should just say you it's are. So like that's probably his mindset, but. And it's also like, if you're not out, like you're against us kind of whole situation. It's just like, whoa, can you chill? Like everyone yeah. has a personal journey, right? Yeah, well, I mean, and I actually, um, there's one time this season too, where um, Ma- or Tristan says to Miles, gets mad at Miles, like because Miles says he doesn't just want to be the gay writer. Yeah. And like, I was in the rehearsal. I was the one being like, yeah, but like, I don't get why Tristan's mad at Miles. Like Miles, if he 
doesn't want to be categorized as yeah. something, but like as long as he's not living a lie, but if he doesn't want to be categorized as something, that's like anyone who doesn't want to be called a him or a she totally. or whatever, like you should be able to make your own decision mm -hmm. on that and not have someone like mad at you for it. This idea that I'm not going to define myself right now because I don't know. Yeah. It's so damn liberating. That yeah. means you can change your mind, and if you are not locked down to something, you can actually explore your sexual and gender yeah. identity. You know, I think that if, you know, young people, even in my years, had more opportunity to, exp um, to explore that in a fluid way, they might be different people today. Yeah. You know, and I think yeah. that's what's great about Miles. He's like, he was never asked to define it, and now suddenly he has to define it for, like, paperwork, and he's like, no. Yeah, I think that, like, honestly, the best way the world could go is if everyone just like I know it just sounds so simple but it really is if everyone just like does what they want to do and mm -hmm. it's just who they want to be and they don't have to answer to yeah. anyone and they don't have to um, check a certain box to define no, exactly. exactly who they are yeah um, okay let's just our last topic let's talk a bit about <laughs> your Tristan's coma journey because that's been like a huge how did you feel when you read that for the first time how has it been shooting this well, um, I guessed that I'd be in a coma. Did you guess it? I did, and um, I also, that goes with the fact that I guessed we were gonna be on Netflix. And I guess I was gonna be I on Netflix. I thought Degrassi, you said you weren't so psychic, I think so I just now you are. Of, I know, now that I'm saying now this, you I'm are. like, no, I kinda knew. Um, yeah, I totally, like, um, months before they called me in, I was like, oh, Tristan's like either dead or like in a coma or something. And then they called me into the office and they were like, do you know why you're here? And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm assuming Tristan's dead or in a coma. <laughs> According to my and sources. They're, and they just kind of look, they're like, oh yeah, he's in a coma. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. Has it like, how was it just kind of getting into the physical aspect of the character? Like, cause you, like you were saying, like you're just like leaning on the, did you just kind of trial and error it? Like, how did you find your groove with that? Um, yeah, a lot of it was kind of just going and just like, I've obviously read up on a bunch of stuff with comas and watched like interviews with people that have been in comas and what they experienced and what it was like. But you really can't make yourself feel like a coma patient, like yeah. when you're not a coma patient, yeah. like their brain has been affected, that's yeah. inside, you can't get in there to do anything to it. Um, so I just, as much as I could, like just at the time, I like when I first came out of the coma, I just tried to almost keep my mind blank, like so very like, yeah, just tried to keep it that I wasn't having many thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I was just kind of like, you know, cause I think that's how it was, was it's like, they're trying to figure everything out, like shapes and things on the wall and like, Interesting. Yeah, it's just their brain, you have to like... It's the idea, it's like they see something and they kind of recognize it, but they can't contextualize it. Yeah, exactly. It it's was... very impressive, very Well, cool. and people were like joking, they're like, oh, like you don't have any lines to memorize, all that stuff. It's like, yeah, but it is like laying here. Yeah. I know it sounds so dramatic. No, but you have to be like, like mentally so day, present in a way. You do. It, it's almost more conscious of your yeah. body than when you're just sitting there like yeah. saying a line. You're more yeah. like, I have to be still, I'm in a coma, I'm not responding. Like my breathing mm. is low, my heart rate is low. Like, so fascinating. Yeah. So. So Tristan's wrap up. He lets Miles go. When you love something, you let it go. Set it free. Set, like it, set it free. You, it'll Thank you. Fly back. Oh, there's a part two to that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. So oh, you nice. just thought it was like. Let it go, and then yeah. you never see it again. Yeah. Yours is more hopeful. Yeah. There's some hope to mine. Yeah. Do you think Tristan is gonna fly, or Miles is gonna fly back to Tristan? For sure. I think you kind of see at the end, it's like, how could you not? Yeah. But what happens if like when Miles is in Europe, he like gets laid by some like hot French girl, would just be angry? Well, if you let something set it free and if it doesn't come back, it wasn't meant to be. You're a poet and you didn't even know it. I'm going to call you when I need advice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last thing. We have a very fun game. We call it prom, boiler, and slap. Like put them in a boiler or a... So prom is who you want to take to prom, which is yeah, kind of like who you'd like to live like, with. So like, Mary. Yeah, yeah, Mary, okay. exactly. Um, boiler is who you want to hook up with in the boiler room. Okay. Slap is just who you just want to like bitch slap. Okay, like, who are we oh. playing this with? Well, do I have categories People for in this for room. Do people? <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. That's awkward. <laughs> um, Miles, Mr. Yates, VJ. Prom, boiler, slap. Okay, well prom, Miles. Um, uh, wait, so this is purely character, not person. Yeah, right? this is purely character, character, but as yourself. 
Uh, as my Savo. Yeah, like as Lyle looking at these characters if you're watching the show and being like, ugh. Okay, or, well, uh, I guess slap Mr. Yates and then Boiler VJ. Cause that's I nice. Guess, yeah. Okay, new category. Prom, Boiler, Slap. Maya, Zoe, Tori. Uh, prom, uh, Tori. Um, that's nice. Boiler, Maya, Slap, Zoe. Well done. Yeah. I feel like so awful that I have to say slap anybody at the end of all of this. It There's could just be no... worse. It could be died in the bus crash. At least it's just a slap. Well, <laughs> either way, like to me, kill slap. It's just like. <laughs> it's my favorite one. <laughs> 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 um, do you have one for me? It can be anywhere throughout the years. Okay. Prom boiler slap. Prom boiler slap. Just, okay. Um. Whoever played, um, wait, a character. The characters. So, I want to remember. Because I've never Dylan. wanted to slap any uh, actor part yeah. of this franchise. Sean. I know. Um, I like Sean. Uh, Jimmy. <laughs> Sean, Jimmy, Cam. Cam? <laughs> you said any. I just, oh, that's I'm, so hard. <laughs> oh, well, that's very good. You've just made this game fun. Okay. <laughs> I would have to, okay, I just need Sean in the boiler room. I need it. Okay. So that's chosen. <laughs> okay, okay, I would, I'd take Cam to prom. Maybe it would change his destiny. Okay, If yeah. he had the love of me. Yeah. To take True. care of him. Yeah, you saved him. Yeah, I did. And I'd slap Jimmy. I mean, just get over it. Just it's already. leave. It happens. So, <laughs> it happens. You know? <laughs> like, what are you gonna do? Thank you for letting me think about that. Yeah, sure. It helped me learn more about myself, of course. I think. I think that's, that's what lovely. I'm here for. Um, all right, so you have just one more day of shooting left then. Yeah, tomorrow one scene. Or today I have one scene, tomorrow I have one scene, and then it's done forever. And it's done forever. It's like we learned today. If you love something, set it free. So if Degrassi loves me, they're going to set me free. And if you love them, then I'll come back. But if it wasn't meant to be, then I will flee. Then you will flee. <laughs> oh, I'm just on it today. <laughs> all right, thanks for hanging out. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good luck on your final scene. I'll be there. I'll probably cry. Thank you. But I cry about a lot of things these days. So. I'll keep it together for you. Thank you. It's a Gemini thing. It's a Libra thing. I'm there for you. Oh, you are? Yeah. That's nice. I support you. Nice